Well, firstly, there's a technical reason why trains are great. They're very big and they're very heavy. They take a very long time to accelerate and a very long time to stop. The physics involved is, is quite sort of awesome. It's a lot of mass and therefore a lot of energy. A big, long train can weigh, you know, 1,200 tonnes. That's, that's a lot of stuff. I think the other thing that's appealing about trains, the thing that makes them romantic, is a slightly more philosophical one. It's because if you go in a car or on a motorcycle or on a bicycle, Obviously, generally, you've got to stick to the roads, but you have a choice. You, you set off and you decide where you're going to go. When you get on the train, you submit to it because it has already been ordained where that train will go, even if you don't know where it's going, even if you're on a mystery excursion, and you have to give in to it. And there's something, there's something exciting about that. There's something almost sort of pioneering because it's slightly unknown. And the view from a car or from inside the helmet of your motorcycle is of things that are about to happen, things that are coming towards you. But on a train, you sit and you look out of the window at the side and your view is of things that have just passed, just occurred. So you're sort of looking at the past in a way as you go along, the very recent past, but the past nevertheless. It's as if the scene has been formed by the train and is pushed past it like the wake of a boat and it's something that wasn't there before. I think it's fascinating. I like trains a lot. I like watching trains. I know you shouldn't admit to that sort of thing because everybody goes, eh, sad eh, train spotter. I don't mean I go and collect the numbers off them, you know, looking down over a bridge. It's just that when you see a train, it is exciting, isn't it? Is there anything that annoys you about a train journey? The thing that annoys me most about train journeys is that they don't actually go from and to where you live or where you want to be. I think that's the big disadvantage with them. That's why things like cars have triumphed. And the great irony is that people talk about intercity railways reducing congestion, taking goods off the road and so on, and that's all a very nice argument, but the real problem at the place where the congestion exists is the bit between where you live and the station or between the goods yard and the supermarket that needs to be supplied. So the train doesn't actually answer that unless you have railways running through the towns and cities but in order to meet the sort of demand that's placed on cars this railway network would have to be so complicated there'd be a station at everybody's house and there would be rails down every single road and that clearly can't happen it's too complicated but I think you know trains even in Britain everybody goes oh the railways are so backward and underfunded and underdeveloped in Britain and well maybe they are compared with bits of Switzerland and France but they're still bloody fast. I went on a train from London to York and it took about an hour and 35 minutes. It went like the clappers. It was at least twice as fast as the car. Cars in reality are actually pretty slow. They're just convenient. That is the truth. I know I shouldn't say that. I work on a car program. Cars are great fun. They're an interesting hobby. They're stimulating. They're exciting. But they're not a quick way of getting anywhere. Trains and light aircraft absolutely whoop their asses in every single way, but neither of them are convenient. You can't actually feel it, obviously, but you sense the enormous mass of a train. So I had a go at driving a steam locomotive that was pulling a big 12-coach train, and you have to, for those reasons we've just been talking about, the traction is on, you have to get it going very, very gingerly. You sort of squeeze the regulator and close it in and watch the pressure in the cylinders build and, and drop, and it, it actually creaks at first. It just goes... You know, you just about sense that it's moving and then it, it's just got enough grip and it goes uh, and it moves and you think that's fantastic, it's just, it's moving. And it gets to about two miles an hour and then you feel that it's running away. It's a strange sensation. You suddenly panic and think, shit, now what? And it really, honestly, it is going this, this fast. 